There is a place, a frontier of sorts, where East has repeatedly collided with West. A rampart where men have stood guard for centuries, shielding the Western world from enemies many were not even aware existed. The Mongols, the Tatars, and the Ottomans. And merely 100 years ago, the Soviet communists, who were keen to push their ideology westward. This is the story of a forgotten battle, in which Poland overcame the enemy and may well have changed the fate of Europe and of the world. It's the story of the Battle of Warsaw, the miracle you've never heard of. To understand the story, we need to go back in time. In 1918, from the ashes of the First World War, after 123 years of occupation, Poland rose again. To the east, in Russia, just a year earlier, Vladimir Lenin and the Bolsheviks took power following the October Revolution. The Russia revolt was replaced with a new Bolshevik state. As the communists consolidated power, they became keen on exporting their ideology. They proclaimed the need for the dictatorship of the proletariat and agitated for a worldwide communist revolution. Soviet leadership expected a revolution in economic crisis ridden Germany. But to support communist revolution there, Poland needed to be conquered first. Unlike old powers that were tired and broken by war, Poland had just reclaimed its independence and Poles were fervently rebuilding and consolidating their country. They sought to strengthen that which the occupiers had tried to crush, their culture, language and faith. The Bolsheviks needed to extinguish a reawakening Poland as fast as possible. Not only did it stand completely at odds with their values, it was also their bridge into Western Europe. And so, the Bolshevik Revolution moved west, carried forward by the bayonets of the Red Army, recruited from the very lowest echelons of society. The communists preached freedom and equality, but they brought misery and death. General Tukhachevsky's order from the 2nd of July 1920 read, To the west, over the corpse of white Poland lies the road to worldwide conflagration. On our bayonets we will bring happiness and peace to the toiling masses of mankind. To the west, onward to Berlin, over the corpse of Poland. It wasn't just the independence of Poland that was at stake in the Battle of Warsaw. If the Soviets managed to break the Poles and push west into Germany, communist revolution may have been successfully ignited and Europe may have fallen to the Soviets. The Soviets moved through Poland at the remarkable rate of 32 kilometers a day. By the beginning of August 1920, the vanguards of the Soviet army had reached the outskirts of Warsaw. The Poles were unwilling to give up their newly acquired independence. The nation came together and mobilized its resources. A volunteer army was created. In total, over 100,000 Poles would join from all walks of life. Peasants and aristocrats, students and workers, boy scouts and intellectuals alike enlisted to defend Poland. Polish women were not idle either, with thousands enlisting in the Voluntary Legion of Women, a female paramilitary. Civilians gathered food and medical supplies and church pews filled up as Poles prayed for victory over the Bolshevik armies. Volunteers from abroad also joined the Poles. Americans formed the Kostuszka Volunteer Flight Squadron, the French sent an advisory group and the Hungarians supplied ammunition. The Soviets advanced, confident in victory. However, the Polish military intelligence had successfully decrypted the Red Army's radio messages and the Poles prepared themselves for the oncoming onslaught. On the 13th of August, the Battle of Warsaw finally started. The die was cast. This was a war of worlds, freedom against oppression, faith against godlessness, the right to work, create and own against complete subjugation to the state, the individual against the collective. This was a battle between Western civilization and communist totalitarianism. It was here, on the outskirts of Warsaw, that in August of 1920, the fate of the world was to be decided. And against all odds, the Poles prevailed. It took the tactical genius of Field Marshal Piłsudski, General Rozwadowski and General Haller, the courage of Polish soldiers and the mobilization of the whole country to overcome the Soviets. At the end of the 15th of August, the Soviet advance was finally halted, and on the next day, Field Marshal Piłsudski led the successful Polish counteroffensive. Since the victory occurred on the Feast of the Assumption, the battle came to be known as the Miracle of the Vistula. The Red Army, which was meant to enter Europe over Poland's corpse and assist German communist workers, was not only stopped, but also turned back and contained. As Winston Churchill put it, Poland has saved herself by her exertions, and will, I trust, save Europe by her example. Remember, your freedoms are not free. They are hard fought and paid for in blood. Do not waste this gift. The sacrifice and victory of those who gave you these comforts cannot be in vain.